Hey guys, in this tutorial we'll be creating this spooky dripping text effect, all in After Effects and with no plugins. So before we get started, I just want to say that this tutorial has some techniques based off a shorts video by Motion Array. And a big thanks to one of my followers, GFX Boy, who let me know people were struggling to understand the tutorial and thought I may be able to improve on it. Okay, so I've already got my comp set up in After Effects. I've called this text pre and it's 1920 by 1080 at 24 frames per second. As you can see, I've already got some text and I'll link this font in the description, but this effect should work with most fonts. Okay, so now let's drop our text pre comp into a new comp and we'll call it main. Now the base of this drip effect is gonna be built using particles. So let's create a new solid and we'll call it particles. Then go to effects, simulation, and add CC particle world. So we've got some tweaking to do to turn it from this sparkler effect. So let's jump into the settings. First, we can go into the effect camera settings and change the FOV to zero. So our particles will look much flatter. Next, let's change the particle type from line to shaded sphere. And for now, we'll leave the rest of the settings as they are. Now let's change where our particles are going to be emitted from. So we can go into the producer drop down here. Let's increase the width so that the producer extends across the width of the comp. And then we increase the height of the producer to approximately half the size of the comp and then move it up so it covers the top half of the composition and most of the text. So this is looking a little crazy at the moment. So let's go into the physics settings and make some tweaks. First, let's reduce the velocity to zero. And this means that when the particles are produced, they won't fire off all over the place. Then we change the gravity to 0.02 which means that the particles are going to fall downwards much slower. So now the particles are pretty much constrained to the area of our producer, but to make them fall down past our text to give us those nice drops, we just need to increase the longevity. And the longevity is the lifetime in seconds of the particles. So in our setup, this means we can control how far down our drops will go by either extending or reducing this value. And I found 2.5 works well here. Now let's reduce the size of the particles. So I'm going to set the birth size to 0.1 and the death size to 0.075, just so our drips will scale down a little bit as they drip down. Now, as we can see, we don't have any particles at the beginning of our timeline, but if you want the particles to be there from the start, we just need to move the layer. So this is a good base. So now let's make these look like drips. Firstly, so we can see more easily what's going on, I'm just going to add a red fill. Next, we'll add an echo effect, and this is going to allow us to create some delayed duplicates of our particles, which you can then blend together later to look like drips. So first, let's increase the number of echoes to 10, which will give us these nice streaks. Then let's decrease the decay to 0.8 so that echoes fade away nicely. And lastly, we can increase the time between the echoes being generated to minus 0.05 so that our trails are longer. And if you'd like to see a more in detail look at how the echo effect works then check out my smooth motion trails effect tutorial. Okay, so let's blend these together to look like drips. So first we'll add a Gaussian blur and set this to 15. Now we'll add a simple choker and this will let us tweak the edges of our alpha channel. So if we set this to a negative value, say around minus three, you'll see the size of our streaks increases. And if we duplicate the effect and set it to a positive value, we can then reduce the size, but also refine the edges to give this nice effect. Okay, so this is looking really nice. So now let's work on constraining our drips to our text layer. So to do this, let's first duplicate our text layer, then select the duplicate and our particles layer, and we're gonna pre-comp these. And we'll call this drips pre. Now let's go to effect, channel and set matte. And if we select our text layer as the matte layer, you'll see that we constrain the drips to the shape of our text. But obviously we don't get any of the drips falling down below and then our drips disappear in the areas where our text is cut out and generally it's not gonna look great. So we just need to expand the size of our text. Now let's just turn off the set matte effect. So the first thing we're gonna do is go to effect, channel and minimax. And if I just set the channel to alpha and color and then increase the radius, you'll see that we can expand the size of the alpha channel of our text. However, it gives us this big block, um, which isn't ideal. So to tweak this, we can go to operation and change this to maximum then minimum. 
and that's going to constrain the expansion to the current size of the text. And then if we go into direction and just set this to vertical and we can fill in all those holes. Then we can use a simple choker effect just to make our text a little bit fatter. And so that we can see exactly what's going on, let's just first add a fill effect and set this to white. Then go to mat and simple choker and set this to a negative value just to make our text seem a little chunkier. And finally, to extend the size of our text mat downwards, we can go to transition and CC scale wipe. And you'll see if I increase the stretch amount, then it stretches off the text into the direction that's defined here. So we just need to set this direction to 180 degrees and increase the stretch and just tweak the position until we get a nice stretch look. Then if we go back to our particles layer and we can turn on the set mat effect again, and we just need to set this to effects and masks. And if we turn off our text layer, and if we go back into our main comp, you'll see that it works really nicely. Now this looks good already, but we can do some stuff to make our drips blend in with our text a little bit more. So let's first duplicate our drips and text layers, and we're gonna pre-comp these, and let's call this text drips blend. Now let's zoom in so we can see a bit more clearly what we're gonna be doing. And we're gonna create a new adjustment layer, and we'll call this blend. So let's add a Gaussian blur, and for this I'm going to set it to 10. Then let's add a simple choker. And this time we'll set this to a positive value, so we'll set this to 2. Now let's duplicate this again, and this time we'll set it to negative. And I found that you can set it to around minus 1, and we get this nice effect. And finally we can make our edge a little bit crisper by adding a levels. And we can set the channel to alpha. And we just tweak the points here until we get a nice defined edge. Now let's go back to our main comp and we're just going to drag the text drips blend layer below our drips pre layer. And then on our drips layer, let's just add a set mat effect and we'll set this to our blended layer. And then this will constrain our drips to the alpha channel of our blended layer. And finally, we can just turn off the text pre layer. Okay, now that's the basic effect. So now we can just do some styling to this. So first off, let's create a new solid and this will be our background. I'm just going to make this a dark purple. Then on our blend layer, I'm going to add a fill and let's select a nice green for this. And then copy this fill effect and then apply it to our drips layer. And then to add some definition to these drips, let's add a drop shadow. And I'm going to set the opacity to 100%. And you'll see it looks a little bit soft. And what we can do is add a levels effect and tweak the alpha channel again. So effect, color correction, levels. And then we'll just drag this above our fill layer. And we'll set the channel to alpha. And then we just want to tweak these points until we get a nice smooth defined edge on our drop shadow. Now you may find as well, you may get some rough edges on your actual blend layer. And if you want to tweak that, you can just jump back into the blend pre-comp and just tweak the points on the levels effect to smooth it out. Okay, that's looking good. So now let's add a black stroke to our text. So let's go to layer and layer styles. And you could use a stroke, but I find that sometimes you get some, again, some rough edges. So another way to do that is by adding a outer glow. If we go into the outer glow settings, and first off, let's set the blend mode to normal. Increase the opacity to 100% and we'll set the color to black. If we zoom in, we can see what's happening. And if we increase the spread, that will reduce the feathering on our glow. So if we set this to around like 85%, then we get a nice smooth outline. And then we can just tweak the size of this by tweaking this size value here. Okay, next I'm going to turn back on our text pre layer and then use this to create a drop shadow from our text. So go to Effect, Perspective and Drop Shadow. And let's increase the opacity to 100% and we'll extend the distance down to say around 20. And then just tweak the direction until you get a look that we like. Now to make our text stand out from our background a little bit, we can add some lighter color to the background. So let's add, duplicate our background layer and we'll add a fill. And I'm gonna set this to quite a light desaturated purple. Then select our ellipse mask tool. 
I'm just going to create a circle behind our text and then just increase the feather until we get something like this. Now we can give this a sort of hand animated effect by adding some boil and boil is that kind of jittery line effect that we get on hand animated things. So let's create a new adjustment layer and we'll call this boil. Then let's go to distort and turbulent displace. Now we're going to use two instances of turbulent displace and the first one is going to be really small to make it look like it's hand drawn with a pen. So we'll set the amount to 25 and the size to 2. And this will give us this nice rough edge on our lines. And then to make this move, we can go into the evolution options and just cycle through the random seed. And to do this automatically, we can add an expression. So let's all click on the stopwatch and we'll type time times the frame rate of your composition. And so minus 24. And this is basically going to change the random seed every frame. Then let's duplicate the turbulent displace effect. And we'll just decrease the amount to 10 and increase the size to 10. And this just gives everything a more of a wobbly look. Now I'm going to add a, another adjustment layer and we'll call this CC for color correction. And I'm just going to add a hue saturation and just drop the saturation overall. Now we can add some glow. So let's create another adjustment layer. And we'll go to stylize glow. And then I'm just going to increase the threshold radius and intensity so we get this nice soft glow around our text. Now to add to the vintage cartoon look that we've got here, we can add some film dust. So let's create a new solid. I'm going to make it black and we'll just call this dust white. And let's go to noise and grain and fractal noise. And what we'll do is set the contrast to around 1000 and then drop the brightness all the way down to around minus 400 and then reduce the scale all the way down so we get these tiny little dust particles. And we can do exactly what we did with our boil. We can animate the random seed by adding the time times expression. So again, all click on our stopwatch, time times the frame rate, and now every frame our dust will change. And then we can set the blending mode of this layer to add. Now to add some variation to our dust, we can duplicate this and make a black version. And we just need to set the blending mode to multiply. And then we'll go to channel invert. And currently this fractal noise is exactly the same as our white version. And we just need to go to evolution to change this and move this across until we change the look of our noise. And finally, you might find that the white dust is a bit strong. So we can just go into the opacity and reduce this down. Next thing we can do is add some noise and a bit of blur to soften everything up. So let's create a new adjustment layer and I'll call it noise and blur. And let's go to effect, noise and grain, noise. And we'll set this to 5% and deselect use color noise. Then let's go to blur and sharpen and fast box blur. And we'll set this to 0.1. And as you can see, it just slightly softens everything and gives it a slightly less digital look. Another thing we can do to make our background feel a little bit less clean is add a bit of texture. So let's create a new solid and we'll call it BG texture. And let's add some more fractal noise. And I'm going to increase the contrast and brightness and reduce the scale all the way down. And at the moment this looks a bit blown out and that's because of our glow. But if we set the blending mode of our BG texture layer to multiply, you'll see we get this nice texture on our background. And just so it's not quite so intense, let's just reduce the opacity. And again, I'm just going to use a time times expression to just change the look of this on every frame. Then another thing we can do to make this feel as though it's hand drawn is add a posterized time effect to just reduce the frame rate. So let's create a new adjustment layer and we'll call it posterize and let's go to effect time posterize time. And I'm just going to set this to 12 and it will give it a nice sort of choppy feeling. But feel free to play around with this and tweak it to get a look that you like. And the very last thing I'm going to do is just darken our background a little bit more. And you can either do that by just tweaking the color of your background layer, but I'm just going to add a new adjustment layer and add CC vignette and just tweak the values until I get a look that I like. Okay, and there we go. I hope you found this useful. Um, now you've got the base built. It's really, really easy to change and make loads of different styles. It should work with practically any font and everything's live and 
procedural, so it's really, really easy to adapt. Thanks so much for watching, and if you enjoy this tutorial, then why not check out my Gloopy Text Dissolve Effect tutorial, where we go through some similar principles, uh, but create a slightly different style. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.